Hey, what's up guys? Sean back with another video and can 3OB singletons find love? Too fat for love. Like, is that a thing? Because I've dated while fat my whole entire life and I don't think, like, it's impossible to find love. I mean, they might have to lower their standards a little bit, but I don't know. I think I'm a sexy piece of man meat, so I'm not going to friggin' worry about it. But I think there's something to be taught here maybe with confidence something like that but yeah you can absolutely find love you don't have to just sit there and not have someone to love because you're overweight so i mean i think this is going to be interesting it's a little different than what i normally do but i'm really interested in this one and somebody sent it to my email for me to check out so let's get into it it's kind of long but i believe that a big person has the same chances in life to be happy as a sim person. True. I've never had a date, never had a boyfriend, you know, never been kissed, just no How is that possible with that style, man? The cat mermaid? And plus, guys are friggin' like, ready to go all the time. Like, most of us will screw a snake if somebody holds the head, so I don't know how she ain't found it yet. I know that. Never done it before. When I see my friends together, the husband and wives, New Year's Eve parties, I've been there. I'm the one that's sitting in the corner on my own. I'm watching them kiss each other Happy New Year. Sorry. Oh, poor guy. But also, how hard are you watching? That's kind of weird. That you're just sitting there, like, staring them down while they're tonguing each other down for New Year's. But, uh, I don't know, as long as you don't get excited or nothing, poke out somebody's eye. What's it like looking for love when you're supersized? Who wants to be seen with a fat man? That's the thing, you know? Come on. Meet the 30 stone gay man desperate to find the guy of his dreams. I would love oh. to find somebody like Harry Styles from One Direction. You might have to step down a little from Harry Styles, but we might be able to find you, uh, I don't know, try the, the big show or something? I don't know. Sure. The 27 year old who's never been on a date. I don't want to live my life never having experienced anything. And the 26 stone man What's who he hasn't doing? been in a relationship for 30 years. I don't want someone to feel sorry for me. I don't want someone to be my carer, try to look after me because I'm a large man. Just to love me, just to show a bit of TLC. Tonight, we follow these super sized singletons as they search for big love. A lot of friends say, oh, I've got the bit of the Greek god in me. It's terrifying. Greek god. Alright, that's confidence at least. But I'm going to teach you how to get a lady or a man since he's gay. You walk right up to him and you say, do something strange for a piece of change and take a step back. Because something exciting is coming your way, buddy. I really, because this is the first time I've ever done anything like it. Look at women, Eddie's on the trail. And see if romance blossoms when we send each of them on a blind date. Why didn't I meet you years ago then? Where you been? What, are you Cancerian? Yeah, man. We got the same star sign. Not the most romantic of sitting downs. I'm a Pisces. You guys ask a lot in the comments. I've seen that. When 72% of people say they would never date an obese person, finding love when you're big is tough. That phobe. Nevertheless, 55-year-old Eddie from South End is looking for someone special to share his life with. I'm just looking for someone that would treat me with care and love. I, I've got so much love to give a person, um, and I want to share my love with someone. I'm not interested in um, whether they're large or whether they're small, as long as they, they respect me for me, Eddie. I mean, 30 years, you're probably just looking for a pulse, buddy. Let's keep it 100, but... Damn, you ain't had it since you were 25? That's tough. But at least he's not, like, I thought the one guy, there, the one lady says she's never been in a relationship. That's tough. Just call me Eddie. Just treat me like a normal person. Eddie is 26 stone and thinks his size has held him back from finding love in the past. That's over 400, Seems right? Seems to me it frightens a lot of girls off. Who wants to be seen with a fat man? That's the thing, you know? Now, the loneliness has become too much for Eddie, and he dreams of meeting the love of his life. I've not had a relationship for 30 years, and I've lost 30 years of my life, basically. 
The best time of your life is in your early 20s, which I had. Look at that. This guy's straight out of Harry Potter. You're going to tell me he can't get laid? Come on. This guy was swimming in it in his 20s. Stop lying. I think this is just kind of an act he's trying to put on to find some new ladies. But come on. You can't tell me some lady ain't huffle his puff. Great, great times. Put on a bite the last 30 years. Nothing. Also hoping to find love is 30 stone Londoner Stavros Luca. Stavros is gay and hasn't had a relationship for over a year. I've had some bad experiences. The longest relationship I've been in with somebody was for two years. He's dead. Okay, two years is a long time, but I don't think most gay guys are rocking out with the like Crocs gang or anything like that. So maybe up your fashion, I don't know, man, get some skincare routine, something. Because it don't look like you're taking that well care of yourself. And out of anyone that's ever hit on me, the one gay guy that commented, I wish Sean was gay, made me the happiest by far, man. Because that means my skin routine's doing crazy, doing good. Desperate to find true love with someone who can see past his size, but he struggled to find acceptance in the body conscious gay scene. The gay communities can be very, very sharp, can be very nasty, mean. Nobody told me there was a bouncy castle. <laughs> I want to show that a fat person stands a chance like a slim person. And it's not all about six packs or muscles. It's all about being... Oh yeah, it's not all about that. I don't see you looking at any other ads. Like, you could be looking at a Destination XL magazine for the plus size boys, but no, you're checking out that dude's bulge. Okay. It's not all about the muscles. Look at you, buddy. Nice person and being a bubbly person like myself. 27-year-old Sam Brattle from South London has never had a serious relationship. I've never had a date, never had a boyfriend, you know, never been kissed, just none of that. Sam is 20 stone and a total lack of confidence about her size makes it hard for her to approach and open up to men. Look, in all seriousness, like, just be confident in yourself. Nobody can be you better than you. And you're always going to be your own harshest critic. You could beat yourself up or you could just walk around and know that you're just yourself and be confident and happy with that. So her, her case is kind of making me sad. I wish she would have had more confidence for one. But also, how hasn't she been late in 27 years? Don't you guys have taxis in the UK? You just jump in by accident and suck like you have to give up for cab fare, like, I hope I don't get one of those if I ever go to the UK, because I ain't going. You know, there are plus size people who are really confident, really bubbly, you know, and have no problems meeting guys and meeting anyone, really. But I think for me, I just, I wouldn't know where to start. I wouldn't know how. And plus, I'm not overly confident. I need like, a dictionary or a self-help guide. Today, Sam is looking into online dating. You need Sean, baby. That's what you need. See, I am the fat boy messiah. I'll teach you how to do it, all right? Not that way. Don't don't make it like that. I mean, you're a woman. It's easy, man. You've got the golden ticket and everybody's trying to will your wonka. That's just how it works when you're a lady. It's harder for men. I'm just Googling some plus size dating websites. Just having a look. With her sights set high, she's looking for lasting love. In a man, I'd be looking for a good sense of humour, uh, can make me laugh, but could also be serious at the same time. Protect I just saw a website that said cuddly and single BBW dating. <laughs> Bro, these websites are going out of control. If you join a dating website and they're asking you how much stuff you can fit in your belly button, run. Active, big arms, nice face. Um, I don't mind if they're a little bit, you know, bigger than the average bloke. But Sam's insecurity means that she's too scared to even upload her profile. Most of the guys that Aww. are on there are just weird people. I've found just weird blokes, you know, who just seem like they just want to, they don't have good intentions. Yeah, I mean, there's always going to be bad faith actors out there, but just putting yourself out there would do wonders for your confidence. I've got to like exercise in confidence. It's something I do. I just did it at friggin' Sam's Club. 
walk down the middle of the aisle singing man i feel like a woman bump bump and the, like just everyone will stare at you but it doesn't friggin matter they'll look at you like you got two heads but i guarantee you like it'll be funny with online dating seemingly a no-go she'll have to find another way to meet her mr right Eddie Mr. Right or Mr. Right now? Once a month, and is ever hopeful he could meet the woman of his dreams there. I get lonely all the time. People say because you're a big person, they say, "Oh, they're always bubbly." Trust me, we're not. I don't care what people say. No fat person, no large person, is bubbly. I'm bubbly. How dare you? I think I have good vibes most of the time, but that negativity ain't gonna get you nowhere, buddy. It's been 30 years. You better get some damn bubbles. It's a front. It's a show. Inside, you're crying out for love. You're crying out just as someone put their arm around you. Today, in preparation for the big night, he's meeting his dad, who, because of Eddie's mobility issues, has to help him do his shopping. For other people, a shopping trip might be an opportunity to bump... Ooh, baby, would y'all ladies look at that silver fox? I know some of y'all like dad. ...bump into a potential partner, but not for Eddie. I sit in the car all the time because I can't walk through the high street. I've not walked through the high street for over 35 years. He does get lonely, there's no doubt about it. He makes friends and whatever, but none to share his life with, like, you know, so... Has he had relationships in the past? He has, when he was younger, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I think once his weight started piling up, it sort of disappeared, like, you know? Look at that. That dad definitely put, like posed in Playgirl at one point in his life. That zaddy right there for all you older ladies. I love hitting on older women because they're so funny. They'll be like, you wouldn't know what to do with a real woman. They talk the most shit. They're like, I'll break you, young man. Like, it's so funny. Tonight, Stavros is hoping to find love at a cabaret evening to give him the best chance of meeting someone he's keen to sharpen up his look. Hello, sir. Hello. How All are right. you? I'm okay. How are you? Yeah. Welcome, you're welcome. Thank you. And today, that means a trip to his local barbers. How's it, eh? Okay. It's all right, yeah? Yeah. Yes, how would you like? Scissors over comb, please. Yes, On okay. the top. Right. And shaver number three on the sides, please. No problem, sir. Thank okay. you. How's your life? How's you going? Okay, yeah, I'm hoping to get some dates together soon. And it's really important a lot. My best look quite attractive. Despite being 30 stone, Stavros doesn't lack confidence. I mean, a haircut will do wonders for your confidence, so do whatever makes you feel best. But also, the barber I go to, this old man talks about the wildest stuff. Like, he was talking to me about the sensation down there and how... He caught it in a car door one time or something and he can't feel it. Like, wildly inappropriate stuff. A lot of friends say oh, I've got the bit of the Greek god in me, you know, with a thick curly hair, wavy hair and vegetarian olive skin. And I feel, I'm, I'm a big guy, but I feel very happy and very attractive in myself. And Regular I feel there's, Spartacus. there should be somebody out there for me. What are you looking at your partner? Um, somebody's got a good personality, who's going to accept me who I am and be happy together, sh share different things together and give and take. But it's not easy, you know, you find a good uh, partner, you know, it's like... No, I know, it's so very hard, difficult. You know? Yeah, yeah I know. I mean, I can't speak for how it is in the, like, gay community for dating, but I've been told that you guys get around, like, everywhere. Anything I've ever heard is you're all cheating on each other and nailing each other and it's just wild like free open market for you guys basically so i don't know how he ain't found it maybe it's different in the uk but i've heard in the us the gay guys get it in it's not easy the world of dating can be daunting so stavros thinks it's important to make the most of himself i really like styling myself and styling my hair and i love hair gel and i do best today for thank you, you. I'm looking more handsome now. I probably I stand a better chance probably more fellas now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. See, See you again. again. Thank you, Oh, sir. man. With his new look complete, Stavros is ready for his big night out. Yeah. Thank Bye -bye. you. Look at that. You guys are going to have to beat him off him with a stick. And now he's a sexy piece of man meat. 
Coming up, it's date night for each of our super-sized singletons. I need a drink. I'm really nervous. I know, it's a bit jumping on the bandwagon, but... Fifty Shades. Yes, yes, Fifty Shades. Dross. Whoa! It's dross. I ain't done the one of She came out the gates kinky, talking Fifty Shades of... Ooh! She's spicy for never doing it before. Let's see. 26 Stone Eddie has been on his own for 30 years and reluctantly got used to a bachelor's lifestyle. I'm getting a new cooker soon, so that was a bit ropey, that one. I feel like stacking up the empty ice cream things is probably not the way to attract a lady. I, I don't know, maybe they're into feeding you. I've had people message me wanting me to feed me cookies till I pop. Like, there's weird people out there. But now, he's dreaming of finding true love and someone he can share a cuppa with. I don't drink tea or coffee, I like my cuppa soups. I normally have about 50 of these on here. I'll, do, I'll probably do a box of them a day. Three years ago, Eddie had gastric surgery in a bid to lose weight, dropping from 37 to 26 stone. Okay. So that's that's like 150, 154 pounds, I think, because it's 14 per stone, right? So that's a good bit of weight. But he should have lost way more than that, actually. I mean, if you kind of stall out around that, like, 400 range, you're not trying hard enough, to be honest. But you could always get back in gear, because the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. When I was losing the weight, I had to have food that was fat-free like, all the time. When they're, they're low in fat and low in sugar because I'm diabetic as well. Since then, he's longed to find love, and it means reconsidering all aspects of his current lifestyle. But this bit goes about five foot, six foot up in the air. When you're laying on it, it's like... When's the last time you washed that sheet, buddy? Oh my God, I can see butt grease all over it. What are you doing? Ew! This guy's definitely playing with Rosie Palmer and her five friends right there, because I could see a couple of... Land on a liner on a beach. I don't Ew. know what it's like if I ever had a female, because I don't think it would hold the weight of two people on it. Because obviously my weight is like two people. In the past, he's struggled to maintain relationships, but now he's looking for lasting love. I've never left a girl, they've always left me. Um, they've met, met not better people, because I don't think... I think I'm okay. It's just that it just didn't work. When I see my friends together, the husband and wife's New Year's Eve parties I've been to, I'm the one that's sitting in the corner on my own. I'm watching them kiss each other Happy New Year. Well, that's the problem, buddy. Like, I don't know what it is about people just not having confidence in themselves, but it makes a world of difference. I'm telling you. Just go out there, be you, and damn what everyone else thinks. Like, I mean that. If you're just sitting there looking over your shoulder all the time, you're going to miss what's right in front of your face. So just be confident in you, man. Sorry. Oh, poor guy. Eddie's confidence has taken a knock over the years because of his weight. But Sam's lack of self-belief means she's never had a relationship. This evening, she's going to a singles club night where she hopes to finally meet the man she's been searching for. So... Do you think you make the love of your life tonight? I doubt it. It's not a Disney movie. Yeah, but you never know, do you? Have you never seen someone on these nights mm. that you've liked? Mm, once before. I mean, I've never been to a singles club, but is there polls in there? Because I've been to one of those. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Did you look? Or did you go all shy or what? I, I just stood there. Sometimes us blokes need a bit of a push, a bit of a shove. I'm not doing it. Why? It's too embarrassing. Why is it embarrassing? All you lack is self-confidence. True. You think, well, I don't like myself, so nor should anyone else. Mm. It's true. Despite her dad's words of encouragement, Sam's confidence is clearly an issue. I mean, that's good advice. If you can't like yourself, who's going to like you? But I feel like, I don't know, maybe she just... I don't know, I can't put my finger on her just yet. Like, she's got a confidence issue, but maybe she just has issues with, like, social interactions also. Maybe there's some kind of learning disability or something. Don't you have to push yourself? Hmm. You do. Easier said than done. 
Tonight, 26 Stone Eddie is hosting a quiz at his local pub. These are questions that I'm doing tonight at the Royal Navy Association. Um, I'll do a bit of quiz mastering down here. Quite easy, or from books or from the telly. There are about 40, 45 people turn up. Oh yeah, every lady loves to be quizzed on their first date. That sounds like a disaster. Every month he goes there in hope of meeting someone he could share his life with. I don't want someone to feel sorry for me. I don't want someone to be my carer, try to look after me because I'm a large man, just to love me. With his prizes in place, it's almost time for Eddie's moment in the spotlight. There's a lot of ladies come here, but unfortunately there's no young ladies. Undeterred. Uh, buddy, I think <laughs> you're not a young man anymore either. Like, oh yeah, I need him fresh out of high school. Like, what is he looking for? And also, like, what are you, Jeopardy? Your prize is, oh my God. Eddie takes to the stage to show off his general knowledge in an effort to impress the ladies. Before we start, I've actually stopped doing it from the telly now, so I've got books. So, yeah. All right then, your first number one. What US city had the first subway? What US city? In the crowd tonight is an old flame of Eddie's, Lynn. And although it didn't work out between them, she still believes he has what it takes to be lucky in love. Eddie would be a good catch. He's, he's a very generous person. He's... Oh, there you go, Lynn. Is she married? I don't know. I can't see her finger, but buddy, you can get back in the saddle. Lynn loves you, man. Just knock your standards down a little bit. Like, I feel like this guy's shooting for friggin' college students. Like, he's, he's, he's very conscious of picking you up, taking you home. He's got his sense of humor. He's an acquired taste, but I think you can look over that because he's got such good ways and that. His quiz night might have been a success, but in terms of finding love, tonight has been anything but. Today, Sam and her friend Jennifer are going shopping for an outfit ahead of her big night at the singles event. All right, let's go. A new outfit, new you. Yes, Queen Slay. No, you definitely wouldn't wear that. Why not? You need to wear a dress. That'd actually be a good date dress. It would. That would. What would your, your ideal date be? I, I don't know. I mean, a nice, a restaurant, some nice food. Um, I don't know, a nice cocktail. He, well, whoever he is, would have to make the first move. I'm a traditionalist. With so much riding on this evening, Sam's keen to get advice on the way to a man's heart. Yeah, Sam's trying to be riding on this evening too. Treat them good, and they'll love, you love them, and they'll probably love you back. And look, the pig might fly over. <laughs> no, there are some guys out happen. there. There are some guys out there who will do that. You just got to look for the right one. Give me a map. <laughs> There's right guys for right people. Do you see any? <laughs> I mean, there's somebody out there for everybody, but she seems like a great girl. She seems funny. Like, I don't think she, the problems with her, I think it's she doesn't understand how to just talk to guys, which just talk to us like you're talking to her. Joke around. People will connect with that. For 30 Stone Stavros, this is the moment his whole week has been building up to. Tonight, he's on his way to a cabaret evening at a gay bar, and the stakes couldn't be higher because he's on the lookout for love. I'm heading out on my own tonight, so hopefully to meet new faces, new people, get to socialise. You never know. There might be someone out there for me because, you, you know, if you don't try, you don't get, and, you know, I can meet Mr Wright tonight. True, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, but also he's 420 pounds. Doesn't that make him a bear? Is that what they say in the gay community? I think so, or is that hairy men? I don't know, maybe like Teen Wolf stuff. He knows from experience that for a man of his size, finding love can be tough. Some people can be a bit nasty, 
because it can be judgmental what you, of your appearance or what you look like, but I don't care because I'm unhappy about our size. Despite having been single for over a year, Stavros is optimistic about finding his future love. It don't stop me going out and searching for love and looking for Mr. Right, because I believe there must be someone out there. There's someone out there for everybody. True. When he arrives at the cabaret night, he's quick to survey the scene in hope of finding a potential love interest. I mean, Buddy really went out to try to meet someone still in damn Crocs. Like, what are you doing? This is your, like, best outfit? Get dressed up or something. Like, try a little. I've got my eye on a couple of guys, you know. You can't let one slip through the fingertips. You know, you got to grab it by the horn. That's what Before she said. Long, he's letting his hair down and having fun. It's all about going out for the night, enjoying yourself, having fun and meeting new people. And someone seems to be impressed, so Stavros makes his move. I bumped into this guy and we basically got chatting. He's quite dishy, quite attractive. He looked like... Ooh, there you go. He's trying to give somebody his watermelon sugar. He found himself a nice young man. He was quite groomed and hairy. Well, I do like hairy guys. Unfortunately for Stavros, on this occasion, romance doesn't blossom and his quest for everlasting love continues. <laughs> and I believe that a big person has the same chances in life to be happy as a slim person. Twenty Stone Sam is getting ready for her singles night and with it, the chance to find her soulmate. Where's got that? Look at that. She looks like a different friggin' person when she puts in a little bit of effort. She's not an ugly girl. Like, she should be able to find a guy. I mean, it's not hard with men. They literally will stick it in a wet gopher hole. Like, it ain't hard for you ladies. Quan, when you need him. In the past, she's been afraid to approach men because of her weight. That is as good as it's gonna get. And Sam's confidence is still an issue with her nerves threatening to get the better of her. Uh -huh. I always feel nervous going to these club night things because I always feel awkward. I always feel like a, you know, like a spare person at a wedding, you know. Aww. Once at the club, Sam makes a beeline for the bar. With nights like this, it means that anyone, you know, who's plus size can go out without, don't have to worry about being judged. Because is this plus size night? Oh my god. You guys have BBW conventions too? I swear, if I get enough subs, I'm going to one of them suckers. I gotta see what goes on there. See people trying to feed each other Hershey's everywhere. Like, I bet it's a wild time. Just wear what you want, have a good time, and dance and have a laugh. And after some last minute checks on her makeup, she has a look around to check out any potential date material. There's a couple of guys in there that, you know, I like the look of, but I was, again, I still feel a bit too scared to approach them. I think it's just, I find it a bit hard to kind of break out my shell, so I'm a bit of a wallflower at the moment. As the night progresses, Sam's lack of self-belief is clearly holding her back. My dad, he said something like, oh, you know, just try to have a bit of self-belief, a little bit of self-confidence, but it's easier said than done, really. Man, she's so nervous, it's making me feel nervous. Like, I feel so bad for her, because she, she could just put herself out there. There's definitely a guy, especially at a BBW night at a club, that would be interested in her. He might not have the best intentions or whatever, he might fetishize her, but... I don't know, she could find somebody to love. Honest to God, like, she's just scared of her own shadow. It's hard to watch. In the end, Sam can't pluck up the courage to talk to anyone. And in terms of romance, the night's been a washout. Um, no, it's not been so successful tonight, so... I mean, I'm beginning to get the feeling that it's not going to happen for me. Coming up, after advice from friends and experts... Do you think that that will get a conversation started? No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK, probably not. It's blind date time for each of our super-sized singletons. What? They had experts? They could have invited me, man. I've been dating while fat my whole damn life. I know what I'm talking about. Not the most romantic of sitting downs. She like with the grand. Yeah. The style. People say, oh, I look a bit like him, like a younger version. Yeah, you do a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He done the runner, has he? 
Like who? Because of her weight, 20 Stone Sam Brattle has no confidence when it comes to the opposite sex. After her search for love at a singles event ended without success, she's on her way to meet Jean Smith, an expert in confidence and flirting. Today I'm going to be showing Sam what to do when she goes to a party or a bar or a venue, and I'm also going to give her a few tips on how to do it in a confident way. Hi. Okay, I like confidence coaches. I could get behind that. Hopefully this lady ain't going to give her some terrible advice. Like, oh, we'll just walk up to like 10 different guys a day and introduce yourself. Well, actually, that might help her a little. But I swear, walking down the middle aisle at friggin' Walmart and sitting there and singing my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard will do the same thing. Hi, you must be Sam. I am. Hi, I'm Jean. At the singles night, Sam couldn't pluck up the courage to talk to anyone. So, today I'm going to teach you tips on what to do the next time you're at a party or a social event. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the first thing, and it's very important, it's have the right attitude. What do you currently think of when you go to one of these places? I feel a bit nervous mm -hmm. and a bit wallflowerish, and right. when I get in, I tend to just get a drink and sit down. Let's try it from now on. Whenever you go into a new venue, you're 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 going to think, let's have a chat. That way, there's no pressure. There's no fast forward to the future. Oh, what if he says this? Yeah. It's just like. Let's have a chat. And if they don't want to, cool. It's not a problem, okay? Yeah. So that's the first step. All right, now let me show you the second step. True, I mean, if they don't want to talk to you, better luck next time, buddy. Your loss, keep it pushing. Also looking for advice is 55-year-old Eddie. He's taking ex-girlfriend Lynn out for lunch to discuss the dating scene. Ooh, what would you do ideal diet? Well, I can't go to the cinema because I've been told that the seats are too shallow, too, not wide enough for me. So my ideal date would be go out for the day, museums, and then having a meal or, or a drink afterwards. I mean, if you can't fit in the theater chair, which, trust me, been there before, buddy. Except they have VIP chairs here where they're, like, extra wide, but going to the museum and walking around don't seem like it's on your list of things that you could do mobility-wise. But, I mean, nice thought, I guess. But I want a bit of, you know, tender love and care. I want someone to put their own, their arm around me, just to tell me, have you had a good day, love, and all this, just to show a bit of affection. Up. With Eddie clear about what he wants, back in London to tackle Sam's confidence issues, Jean is keen to see how she would usually approach someone she fancies in a bar. I mean, in all fairness, he's going to have to lose a little more weight before anybody wraps their arm around him, but... Let's get back to the confidence coach. Let's say that you see a cute boy at the bar, okay? What would you do? I'd probably just be like this on the bar mm -hmm. and just every few minutes so I just look at him or just, you know, just be like. So do you think that that will get a conversation started? Exactly, stare them down. Intimidation always works best. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, probably not. So what you would do is you would just ask an open question. So you can say, oh, what drink's good here? Or that looks interesting, what are you drinking? And then here's the key, Sam. We can't let our moods and our self-esteem be affected by what this random stranger says or doesn't say to us. Yeah. Exactly, you walk right up to them, centimeters or inches, and that's the question. Having learned the new techniques, it's time to see if Sam can put them into practice. Imagine that I'm a handsome young chap that you see at the bar, OK? OK. OK. Um, excuse me, do you mind if I ask what you're drinking? Yeah, it's actually a gin and tonic. Oh, um, I don't know which one's that. Um... And after a shaky start, Sam starts to warm up. Have you been here long? We've been here about an hour so far, but we're thinking of, of heading out. It's a bit dead. Do you know what? Well, I got a two-way ticket to Pound Town. Come on, baby. Anywhere That's what you say. Here. I, mean, I don't live locally. I don't come up here that often. Oh, you guys, you guys should come with us. It sounds good. I just asked my friend if she wants to join. Okay, great. All right. Get your coat, lady. You pulled. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Seriously. Over lunch, the conversation turns to what Eddie would be willing to do to find love. I mean, that was a perfectly normal conversation. In all fairness, I really think she's just intimidated by the opposite sex. And if she could get over that, she's a pretty girl. She could get somebody. How would you feel about going on a blind date? I've never ever thought about it before, but no, I'll be up for that, yeah. Any, any way I can meet someone, 
whether it's blind date, speed dating, or what other things you can do. Glory hole? Yeah, I'd definitely be up for it. I, I feel like I intimidate people because because of my size. No, no. I mean, I, I've, I've seen guys walk around and they walk around like that. You don't. I think I'm a nice guy. You are a nice guy. Not like your Richard Gere, but I'm... But is, is that everything? More like Frank Spencer, basically. <laughs> I'm so bad with names, I have no clue who that is. If you showed me the face, I'd know. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not worried as long as she pays the bill in the night. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> How you bought your purse? <laughs> I don't think you'll get a second date at that rate, but do you, King? And the role plays over, and it's time for Jean to help her deal with setbacks when dating. So this is the last of the tips, and this is basically how we feel about rejection. So instead of using rejection as something that is soul destroying and is painful, <laughs> instead you're looking at it as an effective weeding out mechanism mm. that helps you find who's a good match for you and who's not. True, if you're scared of rejection, you're never gonna get anywhere in life because people are gonna dislike you. You think I sit here and everyone friggin' likes me? No, people absolutely hate me. They'll message, hey, screw you, Sean. And I'll usually comment back, don't threaten me with a good time. What can you do that's gonna get you closer to finding love? I think I'm a bit of an introvert kind of thing, but I wanna kinda of try and push myself out of my comfort zone and just try and do stuff I wouldn't normally do. You are right on target when you said pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, because that's how we build confidence. If we don't make ourselves feel uncomfortable and try new things, we're just stuck in the little bubbles that our minds create. Hey, discomfort builds character, and I actually believe that it will help you grow as a person, but she's wearing all kinds of mermaid shirts and stuff. She's just worried about getting somebody under her seat, I guess. In my experience, there's more than one person out there for everyone. <laughs> there's probably at least a dozen or so. But the Ooh. thing is, you have to be in the right place yourself before you can attract those people. So it's about first sorting yourself out, becoming the best person you can be, and then those people will be more available to you. True, you'll never scare people away working on yourself. And I've always thought it was funny when people focus more on a relationship than their self because you growing as a person will attract more people. I hope that you found what we talked about helpful. Yes, yes, I have very much. Good. Okay. Hopefully now I can move forward and perhaps try and become a bit more of a more confident and more self-aware person. All right, let's go. Our three super-sized singletons have tried internet dating, singles evenings, and cabaret nights. But their search for love has so far proved fruitless. So we've arranged for each of them to go on a blind date. Yeah, I'll show my hair off because it makes me look younger. <laughs> it's terrifying, really, because it's the first time I've ever done anything like it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm thinking quite positive about it. For 55-year-old Eddie, it'll be his first date in 30 years. When I, was I mean, I don't believe it's been 30 years. In 30 years, you could trip and fall into some booty, to be honest. I was young, I was Jack the Lad, and you know, but now I'm older and I've not had a relationship 30 years. It's, it's, it's all nervous. It's like a new thing for me again. I've got to start again. Um, getting out, meeting women, ladies. Um, and and I, I feel very nervous, nervous over it. Um, because it's been so long. Hey, nervous is good, and also, oh my god, why are they filming this guy on the toilet? Are we trying to get into some weird kinky stuff now? And how, did he date that Lynn lady 30 years ago? But look at that, he shaved his head, he's at least 20 now. Let's get ready for tonight. I'm hoping that we can have some kind of relationship, if she's prepared to. But the ball's in her court, because I'll be happy to be with someone, if she's happy to be with me. So. Okay. I have to see tonight. Can't wait. Look at women. Eddie's on the prowl. Just... Oh my god, did he wax one spot on his back? Like there's one spot missing hair. And also, 30 years, buddy, you better friggin' bust out the Jurgens because if not, you're about to give her the best 30 seconds of her life. Gotta get dressed now. 30 Stone Stavros is hoping his date will be able to see beyond his weight and he'll finally meet the man of his dreams. Feeling very, very confident. Uh, I'm not very shy at all. 
Um, I'm straightforward meeting new people. I like right. socialising and meeting new people. So hopefully I'll be okay. And for 20... Look at that. That's a pretty dress. I feel like she's going to pull some guy tonight. She's seven-year-old Sam. It's the day she's been waiting for her entire adult life. This is going to be my first date of any kind. My first blind date. And I'm terrified. I think like, there's a small 10% of me that's a bit excited. The best case scenario that I can hope for is really just to that the person is happy to see me, that they have a smile and, you know. Do you guys do that, the one spray down the shirt? Or if you're a guy, like spray one down your crack for just insurance. But she is so nervous, like it's really terrifying me. And I usually don't get that worried, but I feel for this girl. Like I want her to get a man so damn bad. Like I don't think I've ever like felt like I wanted somebody else to hook up more than this lady right now. Just a handshake or a, oh hi, you are right? Something like that, you know. A hymen shake. I haven't got shake. a clue what her name is. I haven't got a clue of her age or the size of a young lady, which I'm not really worried about anyway. I just can't wait now. Just can't wait to see her and I hope she, hope she don't mind seeing me. Very much. Bro, I haven't used Axe since middle school. That is not a very adult thing. Or in the UK, do you guys all use spray on deodorants? I think I heard that somewhere. Looking forward to this tonight. I'm going to wear my suit trousers. Um, I've got a nice blue shirt that I wear when I go out on special occasions. Because of my size, it's hard to get clothes that make you look nice. I can only go to a specialist shop to buy them what I need. True. I'll be, I'll be nice and smart and, and polite. Just bold and fat, that's all. She'll have to get used to it. <laughs> that's right. You show her all that chub and make sure she, she gets a part. Uh, I'm not going to say it. But anyways, I was a 6X. I couldn't buy, like, any clothes anywhere. Now that I'm down to a 2X, man, I love buying myself some new clothes. You know. We'll just see what happens. That's too short? I was just going to go and chill out and get to know each other and I'm hoping um, this is my day. Stavros is going to meet 26-year-old Adam Brooks, who works in retail. Adam's a lot smaller than Stavros, but exactly his type. Quality. All right. I'm normally look for in a guy or on a date. Uh, Say a Greek god, a Greek god, because he's a Greek god in Crocs. Someone who can make me laugh, someone who is easy to talk to, and someone who gets me for being me. Eddie's date will be 45-year-old Angie Summers from Southend. Very nervous. I'm feeling very nervous about the date. Um, actually going to meet him for the first time. He might not like me or, or whatever. And it's just that initial thing. There you go, buddy. She's got the girls poking out a little for you. You should get a little excited. Not too excited, though. It's been 30 years. You're going to have to keep it in your pants for at least an hour. She's making me nervous. I've been out with guys who have been bigger. I've been out with guys who are shorter than me, taller than me. So it doesn't bother me. I'm not a lonely person, but I would like I would like a boyfriend who I can sit on the settee, watch a film with, and cuddle up to. Sam's first ever date will be with 22-year-old Tom Mullins, who works for the National Trust. I am absolutely bricking it now. I was fine. Did he, does that mean something else in the UK? Because if you say you're bricking it in the US, it means you're ready to go, buddy. And I think she is too. 27 years, you just might be her Prince Charming. Until about five minutes ago, and now, now I'm really worried she's going to take one look and run away screaming. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm really quite nervous now. Um... Oh, these two actually make a cute couple. They're both so nervous they're ready to crawl out of their skin, but they could work. Ah. Don't scream at her. I hope she's coming into it like I am, with just an open mind. Despite her previous lack of confidence, Sam's now armed with the advice and techniques from flirting expert Jean and is determined to put them to use. 
Hey, uh... Hello. You all right? I'm all right. How are you doing? I'm all right. All right. Hi, uh... Hi, uh, Tom. Sam. Kiss her. Pleasure. <laughs> he did kiss her. All right. Like, this is making me so uncomfortable, though, because I can tell that they are both, like, ready to jump out of their skin. Yeah. Take a seat. Are you going to make me sit on the grass? Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> right. No, not, not the most romantic of sitting downs. That's right. Take off your pants so she don't have to sit on the grass. She could sit on those. <laughs> I'm afraid. Yeah, I think it's getting up. That's more of a challenge. <laughs> it's the moment of truth for Stavros. If his date goes well, it could be the start of the relationship he's been searching for. Oh, God. Hello. Hi. I'm Stavros, by the way. I'm Adam. Nice to Oh man, the way he looked at him, he was like, dear God, let this not be him. This is not off to a good start. Thank you. I need a drink. I'm really nervous. I've not been on a date for a long time. Hi guys. Can I get you some drinks? Can I have an orange juice, please? Sure. Uh, can I get a vodka red bull? Sure. Single or double? Uh, double. Triple! While Adam opts for some Dutch courage, Angie's just worried whether Eddie will turn up at all. He ain't done a runner, has he? He ain't never gonna do a runner, trust me. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Put my stuff down. Um, I'll give you a hug. Great, I'm all for that. Cool. Nice to see you, honey. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Bit nervous, but I'm sure you yeah, are too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, Definitely. Well, that hug did it. Well, that did me the world, to be honest with you. Oh, good. Because I was really nervous. And yeah. It was great. Oh, oh my God! This guy just said he glued his boxers to his thigh from a hug. Well, thirty years. I guess it's possible. Brilliant. Cool. I'm Eddie. You're. Yeah, I'm Angie. Nice to meet you, Angie. Nice to meet you. Ah, so. I'm nervous. I was so nervous, but. Mm. Seeing you there, I thought, great, wow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, no, thank you. No, no. I, I thought you wouldn't like me, to be honest. <laughs> What's there not to like? You're a lovely looking lady. Oh, thank you. And you're. you're I don't get many hugs. Yeah. You're lovely. So, oh, thank you. It's very nice. Got nice eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie and Angie see. You should see them at 7 a.m. after. Seem <laughs> to be off to a good start. But how are Sam and Tom getting on at their picnic? Sausage. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you very much. With Talk. flirting expert Jean's advice in mind, Talk. Sam tries to break the ice. Have you got any pets at all? Or? No. Or that you? <laughs> yeah, I've got five cats at home. Jeez. Five cats seems like a little much. But I don't know, you guys got really mad at me when I said I was more of a dog person, so cats are lovely, all five. In South End, Eddie and Angie continue to hit it off. I'm a church girl, I hope that's all right. Doesn't worry me, mate. You know, um, I've been a Christian all my life. Oh, great. I've got all a friend right. with she might, You might even know her. As long as I gotta give you an exorcism in the bedroom, we're go. Um, her name's Camilla. Not Camilla. She's a Yes. She's a friend of mine. She's a nurse. She's my yeah, nurse. Yeah, she's, she's, one, she's nurse. one of my good friends. Wow. It's like, good. this doesn't seem like a blind date. It seems like I know you anyway. Yeah, I and know. I, I know. <laughs> this is good. I go bingo, you know Mecca? Yeah, my friend goes on a Thursday. Oh. I go on a Thursday. I'll do it. It's free, isn't it? That's why I go. Would you look match made in friggin' heaven, guys? This is going so well. Ah. So anytime you fancy coming bingo, just oh, yeah. I mean, I'll give him your number. When you, I mean, I'd always come and pick you up, take your bingo, and drop oh, you home. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, I'll come along. It does seem like I've known you for years. <laughs> yeah, I know. It does feel like that. 20 minutes. I know. That's going really well, I think. Meanwhile, Stavros is also on his favourite topic of conversation. My hobbies are, my big fascination is playing bingo. Bingo. Yeah. What is it with you guys in the UK and bingo? Like, that's something that the elderly do here. I have never been to bingo. 
I need to go, man. It sounds like this is friggin' fun as hell. I love fan of bingo. Oh, do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, um, brilliant. Also, my other hobbies and interests, I love viewing um, airports and planes and stuff. I've got a fascination of viewing aeroplanes, uh, sort of comparing different models of airlines. What, them taking off? Or... Yeah, I really love... Because I've got a f close friend of mine, and she um, took me to a couple of airports recently. Okay. With I haven't been on an airplane since I was 11. I was too fat and I wasn't paying for two seats. Visited South End Airport. So how often do you? Every couple of weeks. To the airport? Yeah. Uh, my friend's taking me tomorrow to uh, visit Gatwick Airport because I've always wanted to go there. Um, I'm just gonna, I need a way. I'm just gonna go to the toilet, okay? Oh shit, he's Audi 5000. This guy is not feeling it. He drank his vodka and he's about to hit the bricks. With the date in full swing, Stavros is feeling positive. Looks, I think he's quite attractive, yes. Quite of the boy, bash, boy band type I would go for. He is big, but he's not like a thin big guy. He seems a really nice guy, but I need him to add me something. It seems Stavros... This is going better than I thought. Okay, so he doesn't have a problem with his size. He said, I've seen bigger, which means this guy loves all the chub and he wants to give him a part of his hub, but... ...has yet to make the right impression on Adam. And in South London, Sam is still trying to kickstart the conversation. So are you a big reader at all? Mm. I love my books. I love my books. Mainly kind of like the, the novelizations of kind of history. So I read lots of, it's kind of like Middle, age, middle Ages, um, I've got some kind of Tudor, mm. like murder mystery ones. Oh, okay. But that's the last book I read was Harry Potter. That's in like the Tudor times. Uh, what about you? What do you read? At the moment, I know it's a bit jumping on the bandwagon, but... Fifty I mean, Shades. If, yes, yes, Fifty Shades. Yeah. I can't help it. <laughs> Man, all you ladies got hot and heavy over that one. Actually, no, I've read Hunger Games, too. <laughs> dross. Mm. It's dross. Sam and Tom may not be swapping books in the near future, but Stavros and Adam have at last found some common ground. What, are you Cancerian? Yeah, man. We've got the same star sign. Are you into that, that? Oh, yeah, big time. She like Russell Grant? Yeah. The star. Isn't that bad if you're the same sign? Like, doesn't that not work out? I don't know, I don't know that much. I just know I'm a Pisces, which means I cry like a punk at sad movies. People say oh, I look a bit like him, like a younger version. Yeah, you do a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you actually do. Can't believe it with the same star sign. It's weird that, isn't it? We clicked and it's, it's, it's not a good idea to, you know, throw that virginity out the window. And I think, grab it like a horn and go for it. I'm going to this event tonight, so you're very welcome to Hook up with me later, you know. I will come and meet you. I'll come and meet you about 10, 11 o'clock. All right. Yeah? That yeah, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, thanks. And uh, like... maybe go for bingo one day. Yeah, that would be lovely. Yeah. Good news. My man found love. I'm so happy for him. I didn't think this was going well out the bat, but it seems like they've got at least some kind of mutual ground. He's, he's decided to meet me tonight at one of my famous North London gay bars. So I'm really looking forward to going there and meeting Adam tonight. Coming up, is love in the air for Eddie and Angie? Why didn't I meet you years ago then? Where you been? <laughs> Looking in the wrong places, I think. And will Sam's first ever date end in romance? That way, that way. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. What are they doing? Getting ready to sumo wrestle or were they trying to dance? Hug? I don't know. It's also funny they're talking about like star signs while I'm sitting here playing with a Pisces like palm stone that I just bought. 26 stone Eddie Sawyer is on his first date in years. Thank you, thank you. So far, he and Angie seem to have hit it off. Over 30 years, mate, I've missed so many bloody hugs. You know... I'm um, a huggy person. Well, great. <laughs> so, great. you know, you'll get... So am I. You'll get hugs off me. But what I mean is, like, cos I'm disabled, I don't want people... Oh, he's still disabled, I look after him, I don't want No, no, no. I just want someone to put their arm around me. Yeah. And so, I feel like that's the problem. A lot of people don't want to feel like they're burdening someone. Also, when they're, like, disabled, 
I know I was a burden to people when I was as big as I was, but that's kind of a tough position to be in. Also, Buddy's trying to get 30 years of hugs tonight, so hopefully you can help him out. You alright, love? Do you face a cup of tea or mm. what are you doing Saturday? Well, that's me. Right. That's me, because, oh, um... Why didn't I meet you years ago then? Where you been? <laughs> Looking in the wrong places, I think. He's a lovely chap. He's so friendly. And he's not that bad. He's not bad looking, actually, as well. I think it's going really well. Hey! They're about to play Stinky Twinky. Oh, sorry. My biggest worry was coming up the stairs and her seeing me for the first time and, like, jumping out the window. Um, but, no, nope, she got up, give me a hug. And that does not help when you when you're shy, like I am. In South London, 20 Stone Sam Brattle is on her first ever date. She's using the confidence techniques she was taught by flirting expert Jean Smith. You watch a lot of TV, or...? Well, I'm afraid I'm, a, I'm really, really bad. I watch a lot of, like, American sitcoms. America is great, buddy. Do not talk crap on our sitcoms. It's been a slow start to the date, but Sam's nerves seem to be under control. It's been it's been easier than I thought, but it's just still but there's still that awkwardness and difficultness really. I'm not I'm not feeling any awkwardness. I but it does feel like two two friends on a picnic as opposed to as opposed to a date. After a successful evening, Eddie has offered to drive Angie home. Well, I've had a really good evening with you, Angie. Thank really. you. Damn, buddy, you guys got little cars in the UK. That thing is under all pressure. Them shocks are done. So, so I, I was not expecting someone like you. I was expecting someone that would see me and think, oh my God, no. But oh, no. Well, I was thinking that myself. Oh, right. I thought, oh, maybe um, he won't like me and all this kind of thing. You know, the things that go across your mind. Yeah, yeah. So, would you like a relationship? Yeah, definitely. So me too? Definitely. Me too. Hey! The date went very well. I was surprised when I saw him. I got a pleasant surprise. And he's just so chatty and so nice. And I really like him. I've had a real nice time with Angie. Um, we're definitely going to see each other again. Hopefully there's going to be a relationship in it for me and for Angie. Yeah, I couldn't be happier for this guy. Like, it's about time. He deserves some love. 30 years of waiting around. Just to find this woman that was like right around the corner too, because his friends know her friends, like all kinds of stuff. I'm hoping that there's going to be a blossoming romance. So, yeah, I'm hoping that. For Sam, her first ever date is coming to a close. Thank you for a nice picnic. You're more than welcome. Fun. You're more than welcome. Do you want me to help you pack? Or? No, no, I think I'm all right. Or just I make a break right. for it. Yeah, run, run yeah. away while you can. Run just away while bag you can. Just run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all that's left is to deal with the tricky goodbye. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's been a pleasure. You too. Are we handshaking? Are we going I cheeks? I don't know. Oh, yeah, she wants you to go cheeks, all right, buddy. <laughs> that way, that way. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> See you later. Well, I've just done my first date of any kind in all of my life, in all of my 27 years. So I think I've, I think that's kind of got the hard part out of the way, and the rest should just be a bit of a breeze. Oh. I hope there's a Mr. Right somewhere out there for me, and that he's not too, too far away, and I don't have to wait too long to find him. But you know, I guess it takes as long as it takes. You know, just wait and see. I mean, there's a Mr. Right now on every corner, but I'm also super happy for her because could you imagine waiting 27 years for your first date? Like, that had to be just a huge weight off her shoulders, and now hopefully she's more confident and can go out there and just not be afraid to put herself out there. Unfortunately, Adam was unable to meet up with Stavros after their date, and Aww. he hasn't heard from him since. I thought we possibly were going to meet up again and keep a lot in touch and give it a go and see how it goes. But unfortunately, he hasn't been back in contact with me yet. I was a bit upset, felt a bit lonely about it because... Damn, buddy didn't like the Crocs. I did get a bit in touch to him. He liked my bubbly personality. Uh, he didn't judge me because of my supersized uh, appearance of being overweight. 
some people can be judgmental, very evil and nasty, especially on, on the gay scene. But um, he didn't judge me. And that's why I thought, you know, this guy wants to give me a chance. Look, fat people are the best to date. We'll take you to the best restaurants, right? We more cushion for the pushing and more momentum behind the thrust. I'm just saying, get you a fat man, stay warm in the winter. Despite this setback, Stavros feels this is just the start of his search for love. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying because I believe there's someone out there for everyone. And I believe I'm going to continue finding my Mr. Right. That's right. Two weeks have passed since Eddie and Angie met and things have continued to develop. Oh. Do you fancy an ice cream? I'd love an ice cream. Go and get it. Thank you, honey. Come on, buddy, you have bariatric surgery. Skip the ice cream, fat-free yogurt at best. Well, uh, the future at the moment for me and Angie, we're, we're just taking it easy at the moment because we've only known each other for a couple of weeks. But our relationship is building stronger and stronger every day. Um, who knows down the line? It, it could be like, well, it could be marriage, marriage I suppose, one day. But, but we're just taking it easy at the moment. We are sick. That's right, buddy. Take her easy, and if she's easy, take her twice. We've been each other three times, four times a week on the phone three three times a day to each other. Um, and we're just taking it slowly, see how it goes. It melted. Lovely. Things have been going really well. I've seen Eddie quite a few times. We go to bingo together. We've been and eat, eaten out and yeah, it's been really good. Yeah, I really enjoy each other's company. I thought I was gonna be an old man. On me, not on me out because I've got friends, but, but not have a relationship with a woman. It's nice to meet someone like Angie who's looking for... That's a little suggestive way to eat an ice cream cone, and it's been 30 years for him. So you might get a little more custard than you're expecting if you keep doing all that. The same thing that I'm looking for, which is being large and looking for love. So, yeah, I think we've found our, um, our partnerships together. Lovebirds. Great. Oh, damn it, they ended up friends. I thought they were going to get married for sure. But at least the girl has confidence now and the guy still searching for Mr. Right. Maybe lower your standards a little bit. Harry Styles ain't knocking on your door. All right, well, that's the end of that one. I think this is just a lesson in confidence, to be honest. People struggle with that. Uh, never been an issue of mine. I would tell you I'm the freaking best in the world till the day I die, even when I was 600 pounds, whether that was just a defense mechanism or whatever. But you're, there's nobody that's going to be a better you than you. Find your confidence. Find your voice. And just put yourself out there. There's no fear of rejection. Everyone has somebody out there. There's a million fish in the sea. And just get out there and date, man. I, being fat doesn't have to mean you have to be single. Like, that has nothing to do with it. Your personality, your humor, all that's going to come into play. There's somebody out there for everyone. So, alright guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Peace!